Hi guys, um, I'll, uh, today I'll talk about uh, physical pendulums. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, quite related to um, simple pendulums but not quite. Um, in that case we just had a massless string with a bob bobbin on the end. On the end. Uh, so there was no uh, specific mass distribution, right? There was only mass at the at the tip. But now in this case, uh, we'll assume some crazy uh, object which is pivoted here, which means it can't move. <coughs> and so um, let's say the center of mass of this um, body is somewhere around here, um, which is at a distance of um, at a, at a distance of D from from the pivot point. Okay, so this is our central mass here. Okay, um, so you can imagine that all the <coughs> all the gravity will be acting here. Uh, actually, it will be acting all over the body, but is it, it is as if uh, it was acting on the center of mass. Okay, so let's say that distance is D. Okay, and so if this um, object has a mass m, then this force will be equal to mg, right? So if we displace it from uh, its equilibrium position, uh, let's say that is its equilibrium position. So we displace uh, that object at an angle theta. So again, I'll use the concept of uh, concept of torques. So what is the torque due to gravity here? Well, if that angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. So the torque uh, torque is r cross f, right? All of these are vectors. Torque is equal to r cross f. Okay. So in this case, the r is this, which is uh, d in our case. F is mg, and this okay and uh, yeah so the definition of uh, cross products is something like this um, the cross product of two vectors is uh, the product of their magnitudes respectively and the uh, multiplied by this uh, the sign of the angle between them so in this case the angle between them is theta only which is lucky for us okay so how can we simplify this more? So this is the torque. This is the torque. So <clears throat> R in our case is D. F is mg. So I'll just rearrange this. mg D sine theta. Okay. Um, but we also know that torque equals I alpha, right? <clears throat> Where I is the moment of inertia. So I alpha. So torque is uh, and I in this case uh, I in this case um, will be m d square right m d square um, times alpha oh sorry sorry not m d square but it is unknown to us so we'll use the parallel axis theorem in in this case so I'll I'll just uh, make a review review of it so if this is somebody and if this is the center of mass this is the center of mass let's say c and if this is the pivot point and if this distance right here is l then we can see that let's let me call this p then the moment of inertia about p is equal to the moment of inertia about c that is the center of mass plus the mass of the body times the distance between p and c squared okay so you can prove this uh, on yourself or i'll do that uh, in my future videos okay so this is the parallel axis theorem parallel axis theorem so i'll use it here so in this case this is our pivot point and this is the center of mass and the, the distance between p and c in this case is d so I about this I here, this I becomes so torque is equal to I alpha, where I is I about C plus MD squared. Okay, 
um, times alpha but alpha is as you know d2 theta by dt squared dt squared and that should be equal to mgd and sine of theta is theta approximately uh, because this angle here is quite small actually very small um, so we can assume that sine theta is approximately theta <clears throat> okay so where do we get to this uh, if I if I bring this uh, uh, term down here then I get d2 theta by dt squared is equal to mgd divided by i about the center of mass plus md squared um, the whole thing times theta okay I'll write theta in different color theta okay so uh, again we can compare this uh, equation with d2x by dt squared is equal to minus and actually I'll put a minus sign here because the theta is in the left direction and alpha is in the uh, um, actually I should say theta is anti-clockwise oh sorry clockwise and alpha is anti-clockwise so this kind of this opposite sense so I'll put a negative sign just to show that the direction is opposite um, so d2x by dt squared is minus omega squared x this is the general equation of a simple harmonic motion so just that instead of x we have a theta here so by comparing by comparing we can uh, get that omega is equal to um, the square root of mgd divided by i about the center of mass plus md squared times uh, sorry that's it so and in uh, my previous videos I have said that the time period is 2 pi by omega so in this case <clears throat> this will be 2 pi times the inverse of this so it will be the square root the square root of i about c plus md squared divided by mgd there you go um, this is actually a more general uh, time period uh, formula for any any pendulum and physical pendulum also includes uh, simple uh, simple pendulums so you can actually check it out I mean if this was a simple pendulum so let's say that is the mass m that is L so this is the pivot point this is the mass uh, so in this case uh, I'll, I'll write it here in case of a simple pendulum this uh, time period comes out to be 2 pi times the square root of i about c um, i about c well that is uh, that is uh, 0 right because i about c is nothing but this this is the center of mass and <clears throat> I about that uh, I mean uh, I'll, I'll do it here um, if this is a point point mass bear in mind that it is point mass and I want to find the moment of inertia about this point which is the center of mass then it comes out to be zero okay and only if that is uh, uh, that is only if if this particle is a point mass okay and uh, in a simple pendulum we assume that it is point mass so I about C will become zero so uh, 0 plus md squared and m times d is the distance between uh, the pivot point and the center of mass which in this case is l so that is ml squared divided by mgd mg and d is l right so this comes out to be 2 pi times the square root of we lose our m we lose our l so we get 2 pi under root l over g which is exactly what we got in uh, the previous video so this actually kind of works um, but this is kind of an extension to to uh, any 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 kind of pendulum um, if you have a rod if you have a cone uh, hanging around in a <laughs> about some pivot point or a cylinder or something uh, you just need to know the I of C and you'll get the answer and so I of C is a uh, 
easy to calculate using some theorems like axis, uh, parallel axis theorem and, and uh, perpendicular axis theorem. Um, I might do a video on uh, these two theorems as well as uh, the torques. Um, I haven't started rotation yet, so I'm just assuming this. You can actually um, skip this video, and uh, I'll do uh, I'll do the, uh, the videos on torques later on. You can watch those first, and then come out and um, watch this video. So simple harmonic motion is kind of uh, it it comes after uh, rotational motion. So uh, I forgot to do that course, uh, so I'll just do it later. So this is kind of a good thing to know. So you can just remember if you want, but I don't expect you to because um, most of the problems uh, are involving simple pendulum and not so complicated as, as I said that a cone uh, hanging around and none of the questions involve uh, such such complicated things. So yeah, that's it. Um, okay, um, I'll see you in the next video.